Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, also known as ADHD. It's a term many tend to toss around without fully understanding the implications, not just to the individual, but to a family. Because of this, my next guest says there are multiple myths surrounding ADHD, and these misconceptions can cause pain and frustration to the families impacted. Studio 5 Parenting contributor Heather Johnson joins me to debunk five myths surrounding ADHD. Great to see you. Where did these myths come from? and why do you think it's so important to debunk them? You know, they can come from all sorts of different places, even just our inability to better understand what a family's dealing with or what these, what our kids could potentially be dealing with. Mm -hmm. The problem with myths is that they create this stigma. They create pain. And, and ADHD is something that we're all dealing with somehow. We might not have kids in our home who are dealing with this or be married to someone new, or we might not deal with it personally. But this impacts communities, it impacts classrooms, it impacts neighborhoods, this impacts all of us because we're all surrounded by kids in some fashion. So that's who we're talking about today. We don't wanna do anything that perpetuates pain that perpetuates stigma that doesn't benefit and help us buoy up and support. What I hear you saying is perception can become reality mm -hmm. and we have to have a grounded reality in what this is and how we can help because we are surrounded by it as we you are, described. And we want to help. So we want to get rid yeah. of these things really so we all have a better understanding so we can be supportive so we can help regardless of how it impacts us. Myth number one I have to admit made my eyebrows go up a little bit. People with ADHD can't concentrate. That's a myth. Yeah it is. It's not actually true. People with ADHD can concentrate. They have a hard time regulating their concentration. Okay. They have a hard time managing their concentration, but it isn't that they can't concentrate. Mm. And so when we say very quickly, oh, they have ADHD, they can't concentrate, that's actually not true. With ADHD and concentration, kids are making decisions based on what's emotionally important to them. And if it is emotionally important, they are very, very good at concentrating. Mm. In fact, they can hyper-concentrate. And so they can be so concentrated on something that they then forget about responsibilities or forget about other things that aren't emotionally important to so them. So that right there would change how we frame it, how mm -hmm. we talk about it, how we motivate these children. Absolutely, but it isn't that they can't do it. Okay. They're capable, but they're gonna put their concentration into things that they don't think are boring into things that they've deemed more important or more exciting or that matter more to them. But this idea that they're not capable of concentrating, that's not true. And so better understanding that, let's get rid of that one. We can change everything if we can get rid of that myth. That's a big one. You say another myth out there is that ADHD is caused by bad parenting. Yeah, if there's one to get rid of, a myth that mm. really causes pain and hurts us, it's gonna be I this one. I can imagine, yeah. Yeah, this is, this is a really uncomfortable one. ADHD is not a byproduct or caused by bad parenting. Poor parenting doesn't give a child ADHD. Maybe we should say it that way. That's not how it works. ADHD is a byproduct of genetics and those things in the environment that a child might be exposed to. We're still working out what that might look like. Mm. But when we go down this path, and this myth comes from the fact that kids with ADHD have been observed as misbehaving. Mm. Those things kind of go hand yeah, in hand. Yeah. And as a society, we're very quick to say, if a child misbehaves, it must be because their parents are doing a bad job. Well, and I hate, I hate the phrase bad job, but misbehavior can stem from poor parenting. We're saying ADHD mm. is not it's, bad behavior. Right, it's yeah. not a byproduct of poor parenting, yeah. right? Or parents not knowing what to do. There you go. And so what we run into is that parents then deal with a lot of judgment and they deal with a lot of shame as their children are observed misbehaving. Oh, I can't imagine that, Absolutely. the pressure those parents feel. And I bet they're so relieved just to hear you say this out loud and confirm this. Yeah, we don't need to connect them. Yeah. And when they start to feel that, then they start to lose as parents their ability to have the intuition they need to know what their kids need. Mm. What then happens instead is they start to parent out of being reactive because Traditional parenting patterns don't tend to work with a child who has ADHD. They need us to work with them differently. And so parents use all those traditional methods. They're not getting what they want, meaning they're not seeing those changes or those, that parenting tactic work. And so then they work from their emotion, they get really reactive. And then they do parent poorly, out of desperation. Sure. And so we don't wanna connect those things. Do not, please, please, let's not as a society consider that a child who misbehaves as a result of ADHD, that it means that their parents aren't working really, really hard yes. to love and teach and be with them. Well, it's and, not true. And please, parents of ADHD mm -hmm. AD children, I hear you say, don't discard your intuition either. That's a beautiful, a beautiful validation. Or block your ability to have it, yeah. right? To block that. So that's our second myth. Okay, we wanna get rid of that. Myth number three, ADHD medication leads to addiction. I have heard this. Mm -hmm. And this is a scary one, right? There's not evidence the 
that supports that ADHD medication leads to addiction. Okay. There's not evidence of that. There is some really cool evidence though that shows us that when a child who's diagnosed with ADHD takes medication orally and for therapeutic reasons, meaning they're supposed to be taking it, mm -hmm. they've been diagnosed and they're supposed to be taking it, they're actually less likely to develop substance abuse. Hmm. Which is kind of a cool thing to consider and maybe what we can surmise from that is that when kids are given the help that they need, whatever that looks like, maybe it's behavioral, maybe it's medication, when they have that help, they don't then have to reach for substances in order to band-aid or medicate to later cope. in life to cope with it. Yeah. Because they have those things under control because mm -hmm. they've figured out how their brain functions and how to go about every day with their unique brain challenges. I have dear friends who this has been the biggest decision they would say of their parenting, I mm -hmm. think, not to put words in their mouth, but the decision to medicate a child or not, that, that, that feels emotional. It does, it becomes emotional and it is a really challenging decision to make. But if we can take out that evidence doesn't support that addiction is a byproduct yeah, yeah. and instead go, wait a second, our focus needs to be on helping our children with whatever it is they need to manage the unique challenges that come with ADHD. Yeah. If that's our focus as parents, as a society, then the decision to medicate or not becomes much easier. Mm -hmm. We get the clarity and again, the intuition because we've shifted the focus. Mm -hmm. And so that's another myth we want to be done with. Good words, good words. Another myth out there, children will outgrow ADHD, so they will not outgrow. true? Not necessarily true, right? This is also a myth. We tend to see that about 80% of kids who deal with ADHD, if that number still stands, have those same tendencies, have ADHD as they grow into adulthood. So instead, when we say these things to people, oh, you've outgrown it, this can be hurtful because if someone is exhibiting or not exhibiting those ADHD tendencies mm -hmm. as they get older, it actually doesn't mean they've outgrown it. It means they probably worked really, really, really hard mm. to work through and navigate and figure out again the differences in their brain yeah. and how to put those into their life and function with them. And so when we dismiss it that way, it can be hurtful. Sure. We don't want to do that. We want to recognize that they most likely have learned to navigate it. Yeah. And we want to celebrate that navigation opposed to assuming oh, you've outgrown it. Yeah. Or dismiss it now and say, no big deal. When you're 20, you will have outgrown this. And now as parents, we don't have the intuition we need to give our kids what they need. Give me 30 quick seconds on this last one, which we do say casually as a society. Everyone has a little ADHD in us. Yeah, we do say that. And it's not true. Yeah. Not everyone has differences in their brain patterns. Not everyone has that, right? So this is also a myth we wanna get rid of. What we do all have is if we're looking at being forgetful or sometimes impulsive or distracted, yep, we are all sometimes impulsive and sometimes we're distracted, but we do not all have those differences. Here's why this one can be so painful because this one, just like other trigger words like PTSD, we sometimes use too flippantly mm -hmm. or the word abuse, we're sometimes very quick to throw out. Mm -hmm. It can dismiss or downplay when someone really has ADHD or has dealt with abuse or is dealing with PTSD. Yeah. We don't wanna be dismissive that right. way. So right. this is another one. We don't wanna cause the pain. Great conversation. Heather, thank you so much. And this conversation, we should say, isn't over. Next week, Heather will be talking more about ADHD diagnosis and treatment, so be sure to join us for that. Thanks again.